Join us for a review of the new Peugeot 508 SE, the sportiest Peugeot yet. Let's find out. Let's go. In the front here, we can see the 508 in general has a sporty design, strong front, the SE, and I just call it SE. I don't want to say always oh, like Peugeot Sport Engineered, just along, but you know what I mean. Here, different front grille design right there, and the front grille leads over to the headlamp unit right here, daytime running light. That's actually quite normal. Full LED headlamps here in the higher trim. What's new? Here, yeah, I got a different lower bumper and then the kryptonite inserts here. They call this color kryptonite. It's a mix of green and yellow, and that's the scheme here for this sport model. 4 meters 75, 15 foot 6, or 187 inches is the length of this generation 508. This here, the sedan or the fastback or limousine, however you want to call it, it has a fastback opening. This one here, but also available as the SW, the estate version. We've seen it here, close to the headquarters of Peugeot Motorsports, where they also presented, you know, a prototype of the estate model already. Then 20-inch wheels, automatic comes with that. So of course, huge style. Will reduce the comfort a little bit, but also will give you a little bit more connection to the road. By the way, this one being a prototype model, there might be some nuance changes for the very very final model but it's almost final you can see here the tail end design also again with these stripes and then the lower part is really changed from the normal 508 here with a strong diffuser real exhaust tip no job for the other good fake exhaust police and then the very sporty side spoilers here and again with these kryptonite inserts so this is a rather aggressive design definitely and the big technology change is that the 508 plug-in hybrid so far, so this will only come here as the PF, so far only electric motor in the front. This one here, the Sport Engineered model, will also have an additional electric motor at the rear. An overall total system output of 360 horsepower. And where do these 360 horsepower come from? So the most powerful series production Peugeot yet. Here in front, combustion engine 1.6 liter turbocharged and then you have one electric motor in the front plus additional electric motor in the rear the same hardware is also used in the ds7 crossback for example or in the peugeot 3008 just that here the rear electric motor gets a different horsepower tune in the rear and also a different gear ratio in the rear so it can also drive with the electric motor activated in the rear up to a speed of 190 kilometers an hour not only electric so when it's running at 190 kilometers an hour still, the front ICE would also be active. The pure electric speed is not yet determined at the time we shoot this video. With the other models by PSA, it's usually about 135 kilometers max, but has yet to be seen what they decide for this vehicle. An acceleration figure to 100 kilometers an hour, 5.2 seconds. That's three seconds faster than the plug-in hybrid version here for the 508 with just 
the front ICE plus the front electric motor. So three seconds faster here with the additional rear electric motor. Battery is 13 kilowatt hours capacity and you charge it AC 3.7 or optional 7.4 kilowatt right here. And this will then give you a pure electric range of up to 40 kilometers, realistically a little bit less. And yes, that's even a little bit less than just the front PF, I call it that way, because here with additional power on the rear, it's a little bit less efficient, definitely. But I guess when you have the additional power, you can somewhat also live with that. With one meter is 86 or 6 with 1. You still fit in here very well, no problem. There is a panoramic roof built in here, so that leaves some headroom, more headroom when you leave it out. This would be one of the rare options here with the panoramic roof. And there is this option to, well, you know, when you have picked that option, then you can either close this shade, it's also a bright shade. I like it that we have a bright ceiling here on the interior, and you can also open it completely for some more light inside. Interior overview with this unique styling, soft touch dashboard, kryptonite contrast stitch, and again, a white wood deco element here. Ah, yeah, this matte wood is also just always beautiful. And still it works in a sporty car, we know, so why not? Then 10 inch, in, uh, the 10 inch display right here, and 12.3 inch instruments, always this setup here. So at least you do have hotkeys here, for example, to access vehicle controls or then the CarPlay right here with the irrigation in the middle or then back to the climate unit. That's actually quite okay, but still controlling that while driving is hard. When you saw someone that sets 22 degrees Celsius and auto AC, you probably won't care. For me, for me, for example, I like to change things around with the AC depending on my condition. Yeah, <laughs> then I change the AC, the air condition. Yeah, it depends on really um, doing that while driving is not too easy. But at least you can fastly access this menu. And GPS looks like this. It is usable, not the best one as for the visualization. It could also be a little bit faster. And there's always this three finger trick where you hop back to this hidden main menu. Fancy. And the digital instruments right here, you have the visualization for what's happening, ICE or electric motors in the middle part, but you can also change the view, what you want to see, like this for example. It always takes a while until uh, it's changed, but you can individualize that, so whatever you prefer, you can also have the GPS screen in the middle for example, then it looks like this. So let's get to the rear compartment and you have the same styling here on the interior, also soft touch materials inside the doors, and again the matte wood. Another red, kryptonite contour stitching, and a very interesting detail here, next to these three stripes here once again, especially for the SE, here you also have this carbon fiber style insert, very nice, and then the same microfiber setup here for the rear seats, it's microfiber fabric leather red mix. So this is once again a very nice styling element also for the rear seats, but the question is how much leg room do I have? Of course this is not special here for the sport engineered version and there's a recess here at the back part of the seat. You can use it even better when you put the seat a little bit more up and also with my feet here underneath. So when the seat in the lowest position then it's somewhat a problem. It would be, you know, 
move it a little bit more up, then I do fit better here with you know, with the legs inside. But the back part here of the seat is also reasonably soft. 490 to 1550 liters is the official one for the sedan here, which has this fastback opening. So you have a good compromise between, you know, yeah, a little bit loss in height if you compare it to the estate to the SW model, but overall very well accessible definitely with this fastback opening. They still have the nice design below here. You have the charging cable, for example, stored very nicely done. And when I put in my backpack inside here, it's just that here the estate would have an advantage definitely. And but you have to, you know, just push the backpack a little bit more inside, and you don't have to go around. You could also do it from here then to flip these seats here, and of course, either with the skier in the middle or then the two third one third split. Welcome to Thomas's Active Driving Lounge with the new Peugeot 508 SE in this prototype vehicle. And we have set it to the sports mode, maximum performance. 5.2 seconds would be the acceleration bigger to 1 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And they told me actually you don't need any preload, any launch control because there's electric motor and the clutch is closed. When you're in the sport mode, there should be the direct power output. And also the ICE doesn't need any preload, so let's just test it. Let's hit the throttle and see on this test track straight. Let's go. That's 200. Yeah, I think it was quite nice and you just experienced the acceleration for the fastest ever produced serious production Peugeot. Interesting. Here now some left and right. Suspension is stiffer, so we have more feedback from the road. It's not that it feels like a stiff sports car. Here now rough road, but still quite okay. So they found a rather comfortable setup here I would say you know very rough road but still not too uncomfortable but definitely a little bit more feedback than the normal hybrid version nice on the handling the steering is fun and unique you have this eye cockpit feeling with the small steering wheel therefore it's really a lot of fun to put that car also in the slalom however you know the natural feedback is not the best it rather feels like a Kate computer game alike so it doesn't give you like a very natural feedback like we know from some you know some other brands but definitely fun and unique and yes it is direct even though when it's not natural so what if we are already at speed um, let's do for example see here like 70 kilometers and then like 130 or something let's see how that reacts Pop, that's it so even this so-called flexibility quite nice so actually nice performance and the, the engine doesn't sound too bad but you don't have like in a roaring sound that's not the aim of this vehicle so definitely more power than we had before more than enough power and the difference about three seconds then to the normal 508 hybrid plug-in hybrid when you have just the front electric motor here also the rear electric motor and the rear electric motor just here in another corner then this reminds us a little bit of the Nürburgring Nordschleife by the way the 20 inch wheels also account for a sportier driving definitely and they also reduce the comfort of course a little bit but I still think that the comfort is still given so they didn't make a no compromise sports version I think 20 inch wheels here with the stiffer suspension still somewhat works so here just again a little bit more slalom at about 80 kilometers now and have a good feeling of the car indeed so you feel somewhat that it's still front wheel biased um, so when I really hit the throttle it's about like 60 40 60 percent torque in the front 40 percent at the rear and the faster we go the more it will switch to front wheel bias however the rear 
electric engine will still run at the speed of 190 kilometers an hour and it will still work. Not alone, but together then with the whole drivetrain unit. And that's also special with this SE version here. Noise insulation, by, by the way, here, 160 kilometers an hour. Still good, so um, I think noise insulation wise, it's really nice. Also, when you do lane change here at higher speeds, still good and stable. And once again, this test track here is quite rough. And considering the time is old and rough, the car is still doing well. And we have a good control of the car, definitely. Let's take it a little bit faster here. Yeah, the acceleration out of the corner here. Look at that. That's really good. And yeah, you still feel some front rear bias, definitely. Um, so some understeering is happening, but definitely if you compare it to the other version, which is front wheel drive only, you still feel it. You have some push from the rear that gives you some more, you know, agility when going out of the corner. But still, it reminds you, still a front wheel driven car. So you do still have that front wheel bias, but yeah. Definitely a very sporty Peugeot. Yes, the smaller 308, for example, GTI. This one feels sporty as for the agility, left and right and so on. This one here, definitely the king of going straight, having the power on the motorway. And again, having the plug-in hybrid drivetrain where you can save some tax money, for example. And also, you know, still able to drive it in a more economic way if you don't throw it out all the time. This would be the good thing that when you're on the motorway like this here, then you can have some decent acceleration at any time for overtaking maneuvers and so on. But yet again, when you rather take it slowly and drive it more efficient, that's also possible. So it won't be that much less efficient than just the front um, electric motor. Yes, of course, when you have another motor, this will go on efficiency a little bit. So the pure electric driving range is 40 instead of 50 kilometers official do lose some, but you still will be able to drive it more or less economic. And now to our conclusion for today with the Peugeot 508 SE. So it will be available here as a sedan but also as the estate version, as the SW. And we can see the exterior styling. It was already sported in the normal 508, both for sedan and the estate. But here in the SE trim, I mean, it fits very well to the car, you know. It already looked sporty, now even sportier with these accentuations and the interesting kryptonite color design scheme. Why not? It's definitely something different. So design-wise on the exterior, I think very well done fits also with these 20 inch wheels interior wise same counts for that it already had a unique styling here you know some changes here and there so it's not that it would be a completely different vehicle just some nuances acceleration wise there's a huge difference when the car is suddenly three seconds faster in the acceleration of course just with the front engine before however in the corporation you might remember, remember that from the 3008 or from the DS7, they had the technology with the additional rear motor, with the additional rear electric motor, so they just, you know, could just take it over here for the 508. And this will indeed make a huge difference in the acceleration. Driving performance then is definitely a little bit sportier with the 20 inch wheels and also the stiffer suspension setup. Again, it does not feel like a completely different vehicle because they still kept the compromise between comfort and sportiness. So this will be rather a more comfortable sporty vehicle. And that's also the, you know, this market niche, where it's also not only due to the hybrid drivetrain, it's a little bit different than a 343 or a M340i or and then all an Audi S4 and so on. So really a different approach and also the thought behind okay sometimes you want to maybe overtake on the motorway and a little bit faster have this great punch but also at the same time use it as for tax benefits with the plug-in hybrid or then also drive in a more economical way in everyday driving life or maybe use the just pure electric driving and that was also a lot of fun of course the sport mode gave you the most power but then again when you're driving in the just pure electric mode you have 
pulling from the front, pushing from the rear, and the all-electric driving really suits the vehicle very well. Of course, the pure electric range is not as high as, you know, with a bigger battery or something, but for a plug-in hybrid vehicle, this is, so to speak, the standard value what they put in as for the battery and as for the electric range. So, a very interesting approach here. Peugeot going sportier, the strongest Peugeot from series production so far. Of course, we want to know what do you think about this vehicle. Again, I found the car very interesting before. It has a very unique market position, especially also with this design. However, then here also with the SE trim, it will get quite expensive. And of course, you have to think about it, you know, what else you could get for that price. But definitely a new choice on the market. So join us in the comments, see you in the discussion there, or tune in to the normal 508 review. We have a couple of these, or maybe to the competitor vehicles. We have the reviews all linked for you. See you there.